Right. So as you can see from the chart, there was a steady uptick in mobile and P2P payments in general, sort of on a trajectory. And then all of a sudden 2020 happened and it hit a hockey stick. It was just unbelievable. So the growth rate of mobile P2P payments in 2020 was like triple what was forecast. So then the question is, what's going to happen in 2021? Is it going to level out again or is it going to keep going up? So I think perhaps the pandemic has changed people's behavior enough that they're not handing cash to each other anymore. They're going to keep using Venmo or whatever it might be. Right, well, we expect the TCH, the, the Clearinghouse Offering RTP, real-time payments, very imaginative name, and the FedNow uh, are both going to be more, at least initially, oriented towards B2B and perhaps B2C, so disbursements. So a good example is insurance companies. I don't know why in the 21st century insurance companies are still mailing checks out, but a lot of them are, and those are both going to be really good um, use cases for those, as well as earned wage access, so early pay and um, bill payment. So there could be some consumer applications, but the um, existing, uh, like Zelle, it um, will probably cobble together a number of different things. They're using RTP now, both for settlement as well as some um, money send, if the bank is on, on their network. But they've cobbled it together with the debit push which is MasterCard Send, Visa Direct, and ACH, they're just putting everything together to get complete ubiquity across the whole country and all uh, bank accounts. Right, and the main difference is the message standard. So there's ISO 20022, which is a more modern message standard. I believe it was introduced in 2005 and it's got all sorts of room for data, including in the case of businesses, you could put the invoice data in with the payment, which dramatically simplifies the uh, reconciliation in the back end. So that's a really good thing. They also have our, our FP, request for payment, which is sort of like sending an invoice. So, but you push the button and the money comes back to me if I did a request for payment. Whereas the um, MasterCard Send Visa Direct, which is the debit push, are using the much older ISO 8583 message standard, which was introduced in, I believe in 1989. Uh, so it's a credit card standard. <clears throat> this because they're using it, debit cards, but um, it is almost instant. Uh, the way they've set it up is that, the way Visa and MasterCard have set it up is that the banks uh, receiving one of these are um, obliged to credit your account within 30 minutes. Usually it's within seconds but the settlement could be overnight. Well, there's certainly a lot of talk about stable coins and um, different blockchain um, applications. There was a session yesterday about non-fungible tokens, NFTs, which was even in the news a few weeks ago. So <clears throat> those are some really hot topics. There's more fintechs here than I've seen in previous years. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty exciting show. Right. <clears throat> Funny you mentioned that because I used to work for a data warehousing company. And one of the new buzzwords I think is so cute is um, data lake house. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it's the idea that you don't separate um, warehouse data, like historical data from real-time analytics. It's all the same thing now. We used to always separate operational data store from uh, a warehouse where you were doing analytics. It has to be real-time. There's no, it, really not that much value in doing past analytics. So one of the most important areas, in addition to marketing and doing customer experience, is uh, security and authentication. And now, especially with real-time payments, uh, most of these systems are non-reputable, which means you can't dispute the transaction. You can't get the money back. It's gone, it's gone. It's like handing somebody cash. So um, makes that even more important for the providers, the banks and the, um, the networks that are providing uh, the real-time payments to do as much um, authentication and fraud analytics before the transaction goes out. So to protect consumers and to protect the, uh, the banks as well. Yeah, I
But they're, they're, with the proper kind of authentication, you can be kind of paradoxically both more secure and more convenient at the same time. So instead of juggling passwords, which everyone has password fatigue, I have 500 passwords. Um, if you can use other signals like device integrity and IP address and behavioral and even behavioral biometrics um, to score the riskiness of a transaction and only introduce friction if it's above a certain risk level. But then on the other hand, if I'm withdrawing money from my account, maybe sending it to my 401k, if they didn't ask me anything, I would think, does that mean anybody else could log in here and move my money out? So you want to kind of balance the friction with the consumer comfort as well. I've done quite a bit of study about this lately. And I think what um, some banking players in the US are looking at it as a set of financial um, functions, like you know bank accounts and stuff like the payments. But what the Chinese super apps have done is stitch together a whole ecosystem. It's not just banking, it's ordering your ride, your groceries and everything. And it's all tied together or stitched together with payments. I think that's the key. And they're also using mini apps, which means there's not a lot of downloads. It keeps you within the super app ecosystem, but it's very easy to use. You don't have to manage and download a whole bunch of different apps and use a bunch of storage on your phone. <clears throat> so I think what many of the um, US contenders are missing is the shopping aspect. And that PayPal would have in spades because they're not only payments and financial services, but they're also shopping. They're also, if you turn it on its head, <clears throat> they could have super app type uh, functions for their merchants. So some very sophisticated targeting and loyalty or whatever it might be for these small merchants on their platform, helping them as much as they're helping the consumers. So I think if anyone is going to be successful, it might be PayPal, but it kind of remains to be seen if the train has left the station and maybe it will never catch on, but I think they have the best chance. Yeah.